protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com The time is near where we are having to reconsider the whole saying that America is the land of the free. Political correctness has run amok. They are completely trying to reinterpret what the First Amendment means. The Constitution is trying to be rewritten at every turn. And now there is just out and out censorship of ideas and people that we don't like. CNN says it's no longer going to have Trump ally Roger Stone on the air. And this is because he was uh, making some disparaging remarks on Twitter about CNN political analyst Anna Navarro. Uh, in an email, Stone said CNN's decision smacks of Soviet style censorship. And indeed it does. And we are seeing this everywhere, even on Twitter. So Twitter, if you have the wrong politics, you're going to get banned. Paul Watson points out in this article how another conservative Twitter account had been suspended. Uh, this was for the crime of having the wrong politics. This person was very active, uh, Robert Stacey McCain. He was very active in uh, criticizing third wave feminism. And of course, this comes right after Twitter announced their Trust and Safety Council, which is headed by not a single conservative group, but all of these other social justice warriors, including Anita Sarkeesian, of course, who was one of these prime targets of uh, Robert Stacey McCain. So as soon as these groups got a little bit of power, you can see they started taking off the Twitter check marks for conservatives and just blackballing them all together. And we've also reported how they're trying to do the same thing here with Infowars, trying to get us labeled as terrorists. So that's why you guys need to make sure that you are signed up to the Alex Jones Insider newsletter, just in case they ever take us off the air or take the site down. It's completely free, and you can sign up at infowars.com slash newsletter. So key to do that now as we're seeing this rampant uh, blackballing of conservative voices and voices that people don't like. Oh, it hurts. But one person that they're not going to censor is the Pope, even when he chimes in on U.S. politics. Grazie a Dio che ha detto che io sono politico perché... Sia dove sia e non fare ponti non è cristiano. Questo uomo non è cristiano. Se di, si dice questo così. E che sono una pedina, ma forse non so. Uh, I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. The establishment is definitely afraid of Donald Trump. Never before have we seen in the same week a U.S. sitting president and the biggest Christian religious leader in the world with over a billion followers criticize a presidential candidate. And the way they've misrepresented what Donald J. Trump stands for really shows you that he is the outsider anti-establishment candidate. But just when I thought I'd seen it all, it happened. Since last year, when the Pope started calling for us to open our borders up and started saying that we were racist and evil for not doing it, I pointed out that even the New York Times admits Mexico has one of the strictest southern borders with Guatemala in the world and upwards of a year in prison, forced labor, if they catch you trying to sneak in. So I said, why do we have to be wide open? And then once people get here, put them on welfare and make them collectivist Bernie Sanders voters. And then when I traveled to Rome last year and actually saw the 200 foot plus walls, on average over 90 feet, it blew me away around Vatican City, which they say themselves in the tours is the oldest sovereign nation, tax exempt above the law in the world. And we pointed out it has armed guards, the Swiss guards, uh, its own protective details. A few hundred yards in front of it is a huge armored fortress castle that also protects it. And it's where the Swiss guards stay. And all we were saying is, hey, Mexico has borders. Hey, other countries have borders. Saudi Arabia hasn't taken one Muslim refugee from Syria, but wants us to take more. And the Pope doesn't criticize Italy controlling its borders. The Pope doesn't, you know, say get rid of their walls. And how did the New York Times and countless other papers respond? Hey, people, you're wrong again. It isn't a walled city. 
and they pointed out that there's an open square. The walls cut in. There's a big open square with the famous obelisk brought there from Egypt, and that you can come there and basically uh, worship the Pope or whatever. I've been there. I've seen it. It's giant walls with huge 50-foot iron doors and armed guards. It's just a concave area that lets you come in, but you're still without the walls. So it gives you that feeling of being in it, but you're not, and that's how they deceive you. So let's look at this map for ourselves. The only area open is this square to the rest of Rome, open to the sovereign city of the Vatican, Vatican City, to the public. But when you then look here, this is all an internal wall, and there are giant iron doors 50 feet tall before you enter the actual church. And then there are giant walls that have been there since the 800s when the Muslims invaded hundreds of times. But what they do is they deceive people and say, look, Donald Trump's people put out this map online showing the walls. And then they show the wall out here, which you see is open to the public to come in to the gates of the walls, feel like they're inside the church, but they're not. It's a holding area open. These are walls, just decorative. Big steel doors, armed guards. The Pope comes out on a balcony and talks to people. Then at night, they have big steel fences they put up and close off. And you try to even approach it, police cars pull up like when we were there. But, but this is an internal area for folks to come in, but it's within the walls. As you can see, this is open. So the map they put out had this mistake, but they're saying, oh, there are no walls. No, there are huge walls and steel doors. And it continues here as you enter the church and other areas, huge lines, sometimes 10 hours. We experienced it to get inside of this most famous of all walled cities that claims it's the oldest sovereign state in the world, doesn't pay taxes, doesn't take immigrants in, does whatever it wants, but is lecturing us, and now in the New York Times and everywhere else, lying to the public. So people are now spinning this saying, okay, you got us. Vatican is controlled. You can't just walk into it. There are checkpoints. There are big walls. There are drawbridges and steel gates. You're right. It's a big armored fortress, a castle, one of the biggest in the world. You're correct. But it was biblical times. It was back a long time ago. The more things change, the more they stay the same. It wasn't in biblical times. It was in the 600s, 700s, and 800s that almost all of Italy was overrun except for Vatican City. And thank God they had 200-foot walls because they were able to withstand the takeover. And so when the radical Muslims got kicked out, which wasn't the radical Muslims, it was mainline Muslims, they were able to reconstitute some form of Western civilization. You can say what you want about the Vatican, but they did keep a lot of the secrets developed in Western culture that were lost when the Visigoth Germans came in and took over Rome previously. Then later, a thousand years later or so, you see the Muslims coming in. So you can go back to the entire history of what Rome has gone through, whether it was Alaric sacking Rome in 410, or whether it was the Muslims sacking it over and over again. It was the biggest walls in the world that allowed any of Christianity to remain and exist that wasn't overrun by the Islamicists. And no wonder this new pope that wants us to take all these radical Islamicists into Europe and into the U.S. wants us to get rid of our walls, but not his walls. I know that Donald Trump follows Infowars some, and I would like to encourage him to double down. He's got a great private jet to jump on it, to fly over to Italy, and to go up there with a camera crew and point out that the walls are there and to try to go walk right through the front entrance at those big 50-foot steel doors and have them turn him away and just in their face document that he told the truth and he pointed out the common sense. It's okay for all these other countries to have borders and to have fences. We even pay in Iraq and Afghanistan to build them walls and fences. But we can't control our sovereignty. If you don't have borders, then you're not even citizens. If anybody could just walk in and get everything for free, that makes citizens slaves of the folks that have come in. They pitch it like it's racist not to take unlimited people in from the world and then give them a free ride. This is the ultimate political correctness psyop.
And the fact that Donald Trump's standing up against it is the reason I'm supporting him 110 percent. Thousands of years ago, there was a basic form of chivalry. Our ancestors would hear the drums of war, giving the warriors of the tribe a chance to organize and prepare a defense. 60 years ago, when foreign air forces were approaching filled with bombs, they had drums of their own, air raid sirens. But in the 21st century, there are silent weapons for quiet war. Pathogens added to the food and water and to the lining of plastics that destroy our vitality, turn off our hormones, and accelerate our journey towards death. I personally counter this onslaught with Anthroplex. Anthroplex is designed with known organic concentrated herbs to create the basic foundation to normal metabolic activity inside the human body. Discover why Anthroplex is turning so many heads today. It's time for us to take our bodies back into our own hands and it starts at InfoWarsLife.com with Anthroplex.